The Tower of Hanoi game consists of three stacks, left, middle and right, and n round discs of different sizes. Initially, the left stack has all the discs in increasing order of size from top to bottom. The goal is to move all the discs to the right stack using the middle stack. On each move, you can move the uppermost disc from a stack to another stack. In addition, it is not allowed to place a largest disc, a larger disc on a smaller disc. Your task is to find a solution that minimizes the number of moves. And the input is the only input line has an integer n, the number of disks, first print an integer k, the minimum number of moves. After this, print k lines that describe the moves. Each line has two integers, a and b. You move a disk from stack a to stack b. The constraints are that n goes up to 16. And from the sample example here, we can see that uh, the towers uh, or the stacks are essentially numbered um, with numbers from one to three. So one for the leftmost, two for the middle, and three for the rightmost uh, stacks. All right, so if we explore the general case uh, of this problem, we don't really have many options regarding a strategy so that we get a minimum number of moves. Uh, it is actually, the solution is actually deterministic, okay? Uh, and that would require from us to define a recursive function, okay? That calls itself uh, to finish this problem. So let's look into the general case and define this function. So let's solve the general case where we have n disks to move. The first thing that we need to do is to assume that we already have in our disposal a function that solves the problem in the least number of moves. We are still to create it, but let's assume that it already exists. This function only needs as input the number of disks that we have and the roles of each stack. In this example, as you can see, the left stack is the home stack where the disks are initially located. The middle stack is the helping stack, which we can use to help us cope with the disk moving rules. And the right stack is a destination stack where we need to move all our disks to. All right, so the first thing that we notice is that the largest disk is located at the bottom of our stack. So we need to free this disk. To do that, we need to move the top n minus one disks. So let's explore the different ways in which we can, we can move them. We can move some of them to the helping stack and some to the destination stack. Now the largest disk is free to move from the home stack, but it would have nowhere to go because the top disks in the helping and the destination stacks are smaller than it is. Okay, so let's try moving all of the smaller disks to the destination stack instead. Now the largest disk can move to the helping stack since it is free, but this would be inefficient because the largest disk at the end of the day should reach the bottom of the destination stack. That won't be possible unless the destination stack is completely empty because otherwise any other disk that sits there will be smaller than the largest disk. So by moving all of the smaller disks to the destination stack, we have accomplished nothing but executing extra moves. Okay, so the last option we have is to move all n minus one disks to the helping stack. That will free the largest disk and the destination stack would now remain empty for the largest disk to move there. So for the first part, we can agree that we can use the general solver to move only the top n minus one disks to the helping stack. We can completely ignore the last disk because by sitting at the bottom of the home stack, it won't affect the movements of the smaller n minus one disks. It is also important to notice that we change the roles between the middle and the right stack before asking for the function to solve our problem. After the solver is done, this is the new state that we will be left with. Now it is trivial to just move the largest disk to the bottom of the destination stack. We won't be needing the solver function for this purpose since moving one disk is essentially the base case. Now, the only thing left to do is to move the n minus one disks that sit in the middle stack to the rightmost stack and the problem will be solved. Again, we can ignore the largest disk because by sitting at the bottom of the destination stack doesn't affect the movement of the other disks in any way. So now this is the problem that we, are, that we will fit into our solver. n minus one disks need to reach the rightmost stack from the middle stack with the help of the leftmost stack. As you can see, the roles are different from the initial problem, since this is a separate subproblem that we need to solve. After our general solver function is done, this is the state that we will be left with. Both the n minus one disks and the largest disk are located at the rightmost stack, which is exactly what we intended to accomplish in the first place. We managed to move all of our disks 
from the leftmost stack to the rightmost stack in the smallest number of moves. And we have accomplished defining our general solver function, which is comprised of the three parts that we have just seen. So let's review them one more time. For the first part, we ignored the largest disk and moved the top n minus one disks to the center stack. Then for the second part, we moved the largest disk in a single move to the destination stack. And finally, for the third part, we moved the n minus one disks to the rightmost stack while ignoring the largest disk that sat there. And thus our problem was solved. So let's go ahead and look at the C++ implementation for this problem. All right, so for the implementation, here I'm reading number n, okay? And here I use my function, okay, which I call recurse. And how this function is defined is to take the number of disks, the index uh, that of, of the stack that we are gonna move from, so the home stack, as we have seen uh, before in the presentation, uh, the index of the destination stack, so where, where to, where are we moving to, um, and the index of the helping stack, which I call with. So we are moving from this stack to this stack with this stack. Okay, that's the idea of the uh, name, uh, the names I used here. Okay. So uh, initially we have n disks. We move from the from the leftmost stack to the rightmost stack with the middle stack. Okay. And here this is just the output of the solution. Okay. I'm gonna put uh, all of the moves that we are gonna use. Um, into this uh, sol vector, solution vector, okay, uh, which has pairs of integers. Uh, the first uh, part of the pair is the, the stack that we are starting from, and the second part of the pair uh, is the stack that we are ending, uh, that we are reaching, okay. And, okay, let's look into this uh, function here, okay. So, uh, how, how did I implement this? Uh, here, uh, this if statement uh, just takes care of the uh, corner case where n equals to zero. So if we have no disks, we simply return from the function. We don't need to add any moves into our solution, okay? Then we are gonna essentially execute the three parts that we have seen in the presentation. First, we move the top n minus one uh, disks from the stack that we are currently located on. So from the from stack, okay, essentially. With the help, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, to the helping stack, essentially, okay? so from the left, in the initial case, from the leftmost stack to the middle stack, okay? And the destination stack that we had uh, in the initial uh, definition is going to be used uh, for help, essentially, okay? We just use that stack uh, for help. Uh, so this is the first part of our uh, move. The second part is the trivial one, which is just moving uh, the single disk from the home stack to the destination stack, okay? So we add this uh, into our solution. And then for the last part of our solution, we just move the n minus one disks from the helping stack, which in the initial case is the middle stack, uh, to the destination stack now, which is the destination stack we had initially, essentially. Um, and uh, the from stack now, so the leftmost uh, stack in the initial uh, configuration, uh, is going to be used just uh, for help, okay? And as you can see, the roles will essentially change uh, as we move uh, into each sub problem. Okay, so the question here is, um, what is the complexity of our, of our solution, okay? And since we are just recursing, and each time we enter the function, we are calling itself two times. You can pause the video and guess the, the complexity here. Okay, so the answer is that the complexity is uh, two to the power of n, okay? So n is the number of disks, two to the power of n. So two to how many, two to the power of how many disks uh, we have uh, will give us the complexity, okay? Because uh, for every state, uh, n is decreasing by one when we call the substates. And for every such state, as I said, we uh, spawn two other um, sub, uh, sub cases, okay? Um, and if you draw the binary tree, you will see that um, the depth will be equal to n. And we know that for a binary tree with a depth of n, the number of uh, nodes that we have essentially uh, will be, um, will, will actually give us a complexity uh, of two to the power of n, okay? So 
Well, that's pretty much the, the solution. If you got stuck on this problem, I hope this uh, cleared it for you uh, and, and helped you under understand how uh, this uh, Tower of Hanoi game essentially has a deterministic solution, okay? It's, uh, you don't really need to form a strategy to solve this, um, to solve this problem, okay? Uh, if you make the simple observations that we did uh, during the presentation, you will see that we are forced, uh, the, the moves that we're gonna take are forced to actually achieve uh, the lowest number of moves. So uh, I hope this helped you. If it did, leave a like to the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.